Hello, welcome to this lecture, clinical trial design. So I just wanted to um, summarize uh, key design features of clinical trials so that uh, you know you understand. So first one is randomize. You might have heard of this word randomize. What does it mean? This is a nice picture. Uh, so you might have heard the saying apples and oranges are not the same. So just imagine if you wanted to do a imaginary trial where you want to study effectiveness of people's taste buds so if you get two groups of people and give one group just apples and the other group just oranges can you do the trial no right because apples and oranges are not the same so initially the groups are different because one group got just apples and the other group got just oranges so how do we sort this problem out we give roughly equal number of apples and oranges to each group. So how do we do this? By randomizing. So let's take subject number one. Uh, by random chance, he'll be assigned to uh, an apple or an orange. And subject number two, an apple or an orange. So at the end, we'll, got, we'll get roughly equal amounts of people with apples and oranges in each group. So at the beginning of the trials, each group is different, right? So how do we randomize? So you might be familiar with tossing a, tossing a coin. So when you toss a coin, you don't know whether you might get heads or tails, right? So in a similar way, we have a computer algorithm which randomly assigns each subject to treatment group one or treatment group two. And, uh, and you've got two, two groups which are roughly around the same homogeneous so because each person is different right I'm different from you and you are different from a friend so we have to make sure that each of each group is sort of similar or homogeneous at the beginning so at the end of the trial we know that any change we observe is because of the treatment not because the groups were initially different at the beginning so this is how we randomize and homogenize the two groups at the beginning and uh, this is a very nice picture in the magic of belief so this is an innocent little cat staring into the mirror and thinking he's a mighty old lion uh, you might have cats as pet and uh, you know sometimes they go Wah! like lions right they think they're lions so that is magic of belief so how does this fit into clinical trials you might have heard of the effect placebo effect if you believe that the drug might have an effect it will have an effect because your brain is linked to your organs and the nervous system and the neuroendocrine system so it's a, it's a coordinated unit so if you believe if you're given a pill and you believe it's going to have an effect of course it will make an effect because your brain directs an effect or if you think oh the drug might have some sort of side effect you might feel and you know manifest some of those effects so that is called the placebo effect but in clinical trials we are not interested in understanding how the mind will affect uh, the uh, you know manifestation of the disease we are interested in the pharmacological compounds or the pharmaceutical compounds whether they have an effect whether they will you know treat the disease whether it will correct the disease so placebo effect that's very important so how do we how do we sort this out we use a placebo pill or a placebo drug so this is a very nice picture the placebo asked the test drug are you the placebo he says no I look exactly like you I smell exactly like you I'm I might be the placebo so the placebo will have the same presentation the same physical appearance the same same smell same texture texture the same taste as the test drug so you won't be able to see say what is the text drug and what is the placebo only if you chemically analyze it will you know that it doesn't have the pharmacological compound and uh, how does this fit into the clinical trial design so the patient will not know whether he is given the drug or the placebo and uh, you might think this is a bit unethical but we have sorted this out in the form of informed consent when the patient signs up he or she is informed that you might actually receive the test drug or the placebo there's a 50 50 chance that is not to say that the patient is deprived of standard treatment they are given standard treatment they are taken care of then they are told oh we have this clinical trial drug it might have an effect it might not have an effect you can take it too to, for your condition uh, but of course it's based on random chance uh, which is done by the the you know the computer algorithm that we use 
So a computer system will randomly assign the patient into group A or group 2 uh, according to a, 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 a random randomized code right and even the doctor wouldn't know which treatment the patient received because this is important this takes care of all the preconceived notions that the doctor or the patient uh, the doctor or the patient might have that might have an effect on the disease or the experimenter bias where the, the people who are analyzing the data they will think oh this is the test drug so they will you know they will have a bias when they are analyzing data so all this is taken care of the double blind design so what does double blind means the patient is blindfolded not literally blindfolded but they are blinded yeah, you know with reference to the test track or the placebo they don't know which one they observed and that's not all the doctor is also blinded so it's double blind double the patient and the doctor they're double blind so this blinding is removed only at the end of the trial right we have the patient, the doctor, everybody will know the drug that they were given and the experimenter will know and then the data will be would have already been analyzed. So now I want to summarize how does all this preclinical testing, drug discovery, phase one, two, three trials fit into, you know, f to the drug that you get in the pharmacy at the end. So you do phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trial and the end of phase three clinical trial you file a marketing application or a new drug application uh, where in the United States is uh, the regulatory authority is FDA. You file it to FDA and if all the data is promising whether it if it ha actually has an effect on the disease condition and it's safe, presumed safe, you're given the marketing approval. And then finally, the company can actually manufacture it and have it available in the pharmacy where the innocent patient have access to the medicine. And of course, clinical research associates are a very important part of this whole process because clinical trials are really needed, very important for this process. And that's where you come in and uh, you're valuable. And I hope by this lecture you understood, uh, you know, clinical trial design now and how the role of a CRA fits into the big picture. And thank you for now, and ciao.